Good afternoon and welcome to Monday the 17th of February and our Chat to a Champ session for today with our Olympic skeleton athlete Lucy Gaffa. Let's give Lucy a big round of applause. Lucy, it's wonderful to have you with us here today for Chat to a Champ. I'm just going to introduce you to the schools that are with us today. We have um, down in Victoria, Kismet Park Primary. Give us a wave, Kismet. On the other side of the country, we have Samson Primary in your home state of Western Australia. And then up at the top of Queensland, we've got the Christian Hi, Chinchillas. All right, now we've got a little bit of feedback today. I might invite Lucy just to spend a couple of minutes sharing with you her Olympic experience today and how she's enjoyed the village and the competition and then we'll call for questions. So over to you, Lucy. Hi, I have to fix my voice. I uh, almost lost it last night cheering for the bobsled boys. But, um, yeah, you have to bear with me for a little bit, but it will be back for cheering for the rest of the Aussie team today. Um, uh, Olympics are amazing. It started when we came in on the 3rd, so a couple of days before the Olympic opening ceremony. We had some training and things like that. We got to meet some of the team of Team Kovrishka. And then we got onto our track, so we got to have a couple of days training before the opening ceremony started. Um, which, which the opening ceremony is amazing. Experience, experience being out of being out of Australia, and Australia. I mean, it'll be it. There was a little cheer, but we we cheered it up ourselves, so that was really good. And the spectacle that Russia put on was a phenomenal. Um, it was a really fun night, and being able to sit with friends and teammates from throughout Australia and all sports was was really good. And then the competition, yeah, the competition something, like something like we had never, never experienced before. The, just the, the crowd and the atmosphere that was there was a lot of fun. It was, it was something that was really special. And now I know why people come back and back and back. I always knew why you want to be a dual Olympian, a triple Olympian, but it's something that's really special. Thanks, Lucy. So you might start with the question in um, alphabetical order. So we're going to start with Chinchilla first, and then Kismet, and then Sanson. So over to you, Chinchilla, for your first question. Right, here's the first question. We don't seem to be getting the first question from Chinchilla, so I'm going to move across to Kismet. Before we start, we'd just like to give Lucy three cheers. So, hip hip! Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I have my mum and my dad here. My sister, my brother-in-law, and their son, my nephew, uh, who's 13 months. And my boyfriend's also here, but he's a coach for another team. What have you been doing in your spare time at Sophie? Yeah. Well, spare time, good question. We've only had a couple of days of spare time, so since the race is finished. Um, I've gone to see a couple of events, spent some time with my family and, um, and friends and just kind of slept, <laughs> tried to have a bit of sleep. It's, um, it's a bit tiring and everything, so 
Yeah, yeah. Been sleeping, been sleeping a bit. <laughs> Yeah. Have we got a question from Samson Primary School? The village, it's um it's different, I'm not sure if you can I guess it's a little bit like boarding school, as any of you know about going on a boarding school. So we're in kind of like living at your school, where you've got lots of different people. Um, everyone's from a different country. Just walking around, there's a big dining hall that we can go to any day, any time of the day. So if you're hungry, you can go anywhere you like. Um, we're really lucky, Australia. We've got the, the Olympic rings right outside our house, so. It's really good to be able to see them and you wake up and walk out of your door every morning. Um, there's you know, always people walking around. Everyone's really happy. You know, you've got people who have finished their competition. You've got gold medalists here, and you've got everyone. You've got the whole range. And you've got some people who will only compete on the last day, so they're still in training. They're still raring to go. So it's a really good atmosphere. Everyone relaxed and happy, and wishing everyone well. You know, you walk down the street and say hello to people you don't even know, but everyone. Can Knows what everyone's here and how hard everyone's worked to be here, so everyone's really happy to be here. Let's have a good extension of our answers. Francis, we're getting feedback on the audio. Okay, well, we'll, I, we'll just keep going. I know there's a bit of audio difficulties, but we're just going to proceed as best we can. So over to Tinchilla. So over to Tinchilla. Just to answer, the village is really good because there's still all of these dead ones. Training in Australia. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Say again. How do you train in Australia? Um, I do basically, I'm a sprinter when I'm back in Australia, so I do lots of weight sessions in the gym, and I do running sessions, and then I also have a sled that has wheels on it that I can push along on the ground, and I practice what I do at the start, so I practice the loading and all of that, trying to um, get that speed at the start before I actually have to go all the way down the track. Let's have a question from Kishan. What made Turn 11 so difficult for everyone? Um, uh, corner 11, it's an interesting corner because it, it's got two pressures in it. So it means that you want to oscillate. So you want to go up and down twice, but there's not enough space for you to do that. So if you don't get it right, as you saw, you can almost flip out of that corner or you go and hit a wall because of the pressure um, wants to pull you up right at the end and then you've got nowhere to go because the pressure goes away so it's going to just fall you out and make you hit the wall so it's because that there's um, so much going on in such a short amount of time that there's not enough space to do that so we have to try and drive to kind of meld all of that pressure together so you come out and you only scrape or you don't hit on the left wall so yeah that's a, that's a tricky corner that one. Let's go to Samson. So, Samson Primary, you'll need to unmute yourself and ask the question. We're here. Are you looking forward to getting to the beach? Are you looking forward to getting to the beach? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's a very big yes. Yeah, I, um, I can't wait to get down to the beach and go for a swim. It hasn't been that cold here, so we've been nice to be have some sunshine. But I was just outside there, so I think it's going to be a little foggy and dreary today. So 
So there's some rain there's about, some rain about um, and, uh, and I can't actually see the rain except for the yellow one. So it's so it's really it's hard really and foggy hard today, and so I'm definitely waiting and wanting to get back into the ocean. Let's have a question from Chinchilla. And you'll need to unmute yourself. Sorry, say again. Do you get scared going to um, not really. <laughs> when you have, when you do something wrong and you know it might hurt when you come out of the corner, like corner 11 and you hit the wall, um, it's not scared but you are a bit anxious of what's going to happen. But we've been down the track so many times and we've done it so many times in our head and our mind that, you know, I might have done run down there for 40 times, but I've been down the track about 200 in my head. So I know exactly what I need to do and what's going on that I don't get scared because I'm thinking about what I need to do in the track at that time. I'm going to interrupt here and welcome from the ACT, St. Matthew's Primary. Welcome. Hi. Just to let you know, schools, because we're getting a little bit of feedback, what I'm doing is muting you. So when it's your turn to ask a question, the teachers will need to unmute you from the technology. And that will just improve all of our experience. So um, we'll go straight to St. Matthews for their question. Who's first up ask, to ask Liz, Lucy a question? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Hi, Lucy. Um, is it scary going head first down the track? Um, not really, but I said um, it's it's an interesting feeling. I think it's something that you probably get used to. So, you know, it's like the first time that you try anything, you're always a little bit worried about what's going to happen and things like that. But once you know, you know, what you're doing and what's going to occur during the track, then it's not so scary. You're just trying to go faster. Back to you, Kismet Park. Now, have you enjoyed Sochi so far and what is the best thing about it? Yeah, I've really enjoyed yeah, Sochi. Um, it's um, a lot of fun. Um, it's hard to explain, you know, just what the feeling is like being here. Um, the best thing that I like, I think, is, is the sense of family that we have in the Australian team. Um, it's really nice because we often don't get to see a lot of the other sports. Um, a lot of a lot of us are meeting each other for the first time, and to be able to come in and do that and instantly kind of have a connection as we're part of an, an Australian Winter Olympic team is something that's really special. Um, there's 41 of us up here in the village, in the mountain village, and we do. You see everyone. We've got an athletes' lounge here, and you know whatever, whatever there's an Australian on uh, competing. If you're not at the event, um, everyone's in the lounge watching it and cheering everyone on and, you know, everyone's wanting to know how each other are going, how you're feeling in training, you know, are you happy and everyone's really happy for each other and so that's probably one of my favourite favorite parts about this is just being able to meet all the other athletes and, you know, we all think each other is crazy for doing their sport. Um, people think skeletons crazy and we think the aerials people are crazy, um, snowboarders are crazy. But, uh, you know, it's a sense of wonder, I think, of every of each other and um, kinsmanship that we, that we share coming from Australia in a winter sport, and that's what I really enjoy. Samson Primary, your turn. What's the hardest thing about leaving Australia? Hardest thing about leaving Australia, I think, uh, would be leaving my family. Um, I have some nephews and a niece who are probably about some of your age, so I've got 
a niece who is in year two this year, a nephew who's in year three, um, another nephew who's in kin uh, pre-primary, and then I've got two younger ones who are 13 months old, two nephews. So, you know, them and, and leaving my mum and my dad and my sisters and all of that, I think that's hard, and my friends. Um, they're such a big support and, you know, you'd be like seeing your friends for six months of the year and then you go away and you never see them for six months of the year and you come back. So, you know, that that's can be a hard one for sure. Chinchilla Primary. How does it feel when you are racing? Um, that's a good question. That's a tough one. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think I was pretty nervous on the first day, just trying to, you know, just do my best. I didn't have kind of any expectation of where I wanted to be. Um, I just wanted to go in there and slide to the best of my ability. Um, I was pretty sick for the first, on the first day of competition in the days leading up. Um, so just trying to, for me it was trying to conserve energy. Um, I think I... I just, you know, had that those nerves and that nervous energy there as well and trying to keep it all in check. But then once I got that first kind of slide out of the way and it wasn't the best one, but, you know, everything can relax and it was a lot of fun. It was it was really a lot of fun. You could just, you know, the crowd would just cheer for whatever and then you'd cheer at the start, you'd have all this noise and then you get on the sled and it's, and it's quiet, you know, you, I don't know if it was just because I was in the mode of what I was doing, but everything goes quiet as you go down the hill, and then at the end you've got this massive cheer again. So, you know, the fans are really good. They cheered for everybody coming down, and, yeah, it made you feel a bit like a rock star. Mm -hmm. St. Matthews, you'll need to unmute yourself. How does it feel to be racing other great Olympians like yourself? Um, you kind of, um, for, for a lot of us on the um, in the skeleton race, it was our first Olympics and there was a lot who was at your second or third or uh, things. So, I mean, we kind of didn't even, like, you know, we know it's the Olympics and things like that, but because we're all such good friends, it was it was really nice just to be able to go and, and race there against your friends from all the different countries. So I think it was uh, it was certainly a different experience from what a normal World Cup was, but all the same people were there. So it was nice to be able to share that experience with your friends from all the other countries. Back to Kismet Park. We are learning about multiculturalism. Have you seen much multiculturalism in Sochi? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, multiculturalism is probably one of the biggest things that are in our Olympics. Um, you know, you walk down the street and you've got every country um, in a different house and they've all got their flags up. So I think we look out and we've got Finland, Sweden, um, who else is over there? Uh, Norway's in one house. So they're all in the same house and you've got people from everywhere else, all around the country, all around the world doing, you know, you're all here for the same reason and, and it's really amazing. You know, you've got different, all your different foods in the in the dining hall as well. So you've got all the different cuisines. You've got Russian, European, you've got Asian, you've got... Um, you know, we've even got a couple of normal Australian things, especially here in Australia House. We've got our wheat bix and our um, Vegemite down here. But multiculturalism is a really big one that we've got here in the village. I think it's just something that's always going to be around at Olympic Games. Thanks, Lucy. Back to you, Samson Primary. Are you going? Are you going to try to make the next Olympics? 
hundred dollar question. I don't know. Um, at this stage, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I still really like sliding, um, but we'll just have to see. I need to go home and have some time to kind of sort out what this experience was about, and then see come next year if I want to slide or if I, you know, need some time off. And then you never know. Like I might come have a couple of years off and then come back for the next game. So. Not ruling it out, but I'm not going to say I'm definitely going to be there. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take it day by day at this point. Thanks, Samson. Over to you, Chinchilla. Do you do any other sports? At the moment, um, in the last year, uh, <laughs> Just because skeleton's just been my sport, but normally in an off season I'll go and play field hockey. Um, so I play that for a, a club in Perth. Um, I've still always done surf life saving, so I took it took this year off doing that, but I'll probably get back doing that um, next year. I'll probably go back to playing hockey, and then when I was growing up, I drew, do did every sport um, I think I possibly could. So. I've done a lot of sports during my life, um, but in the last couple of years, skeleton's been the main, you know, that's been the focus, but um, I'll get back to playing some other sports. I really like playing team sports. I like being part of a team, so, you know, getting back to playing hockey or something like that will be a lot of fun. St. Matthews. How many medals have you ever won? Um, in skeleton, um, ooh, I don't know, probably about 10 or so. Um, I've won a silver medal at a World Cup event and then I've got a few kind of fifths and sixths and fourths and things like that and then at the, the lower level skeleton events as well, I've, I've medaled at them as well. So probably in all, uh, probably about 10 medals. What advice would you give to us if we were interested in becoming skeleton athletes? Oh, oh, the big thing that you need to have for a skeleton athlete is a good sprint start. So, um, I would say that you need to do some sprint training. So, if you like to run fast, um. You need to be calm on the skeleton sled, so you can't, you know, that's a problem that I had earlier in my career is I would move around on the sled all the time and that's just putting you into little skids and it's energy that's not making you go fast down the track. Um, but I think the biggest thing if you want to become a skeleton racer or you want to do anything, anything in life is just to keep going and to always have that as a goal um, and don't, you know, just keep working for it. If you've got that, you know in yourself you can do anything that you want to do. So just keep striving and keep pushing for it and, and you'll always have the people who are close to you. They'll be supporting you 100%. So just keep going for anything that you ever want to do. Samson Primary. What was your final place in the competition? I ended up 17th. Thank you. Wait, were you happy with that? Um, short answer, probably no. But I know that I made a mistake in my first run and that dropped me way down the field. But if I... Um, I was really happy with the way that I slid in the last three runs. Um, so overall, I was happy with my my performance. I just wasn't happy with the number that's going to be standing next to my name. But you know, there's more to an Olympics than just a number. Um, you know, so I'm happy with with what I could achieve and what how I how I did in these games for sure. Chinchilla. Yeah. 
Do you get nervous? Yes, no, I do. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, happy with that. <laughs> yeah, I do get nervous. Um, I think it's... Um, I, I think everyone gets a little bit nervous for, you know, especially in Olympic Games. Um, you know, it's just trying to channel those nerves into something that's positive rather than letting them, you know, be a detriment to your race. So, you know, that's what I tried to do. Um, I don't know how well it worked for the first run, but, you know, you're always going to have a little bit of nerves going into every run, but if you can just, you know, get them to propel you down the down the ice then that's going to be that's going to be all right but yeah you just have to kind of keep those nerves in check over to you St Matthews Lucy this is our last question because we have to go and we've loved talking to you and thank you for contacting us all the way from Sochi. So no we're problem. going to say goodbye now from Bye. 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 All right, let's go back to uh, Kismet Park. They might have another question for you. How does the Sochi skeleton venue compare to others around the world? Oh, it is, oh, it an, is amazing, an amazing uh, facility. Uh, facility. If you, I don't know if you could see it on TV, but um, it's five stories high, so it goes all the way up into the roof. And um, at the very top level, they've got a start. They've got a, um, a warm-up area. So it's 40 metres long and it's a running track. So it's what you have, you know, at all your Olympic um, stadiums, you know, your running tracks there. And so you can, we can do all our warm-ups there, which is something that's really unique to here because normally we're just out on the road where all the cars are doing our warm-ups, you know, seeing if it's snowy or if it's slippery. But here we, we do it all undercover and the whole track is covered. So if it was if it was raining or it was snowing here, that can really affect a race. Um, but we don't have that problem here. You know, we had a nice sunny day, but if it did happen to snow, um, there would be no problem because there's a roof that covers the whole of the track, which is something that's really unique to this track. Um, and the other unique thing about this track is there's the uphill sections. So you've probably seen the really big uphill from 14 to 15 after the long straightaway you come around to a left hand turn and then you go up the hill and it almost feels like you're going you're going to finish the race because you know there's nowhere else in the world that you go up uphill you always go you know maybe on the flat or maybe a, a slight incline and then you go back down straight away but here it's a really big uphill so that's a, a really fun and different thing about this track Samson Primary. Thank you. Bye. Thank Maybe you. I'll come in. Bye, Dockers. Thank you very much. Go, Dockers. I love the Dockers. Me too. Sorry, Essendon. Go Essendon! Woo! Go <laughs> Looks like Samson Primary are leaving us, so we might just call for one more question from each of the schools. So across to Chinchilla. Have you ever hurt yourself on the skeleton track? Yes. Um, especially when I was learning in the first few years. I mean, I still am learning now. Um, I've still got a couple of bruises, actually, just from this race, um, from hitting the walls. So on our sleds, we have, you know, a saddle, what we call a saddle, which is what you see when we're pushing at the start, what we're holding on to, and then that goes on our body, and that's just made out of metal uh, with a little bit of padding on it. Um, so when we hit the wall, we... Um, 
our bone goes onto that metal. So I've got a couple of bruises on my hips from hitting out of corner 11 this week. Um, but I think probably, yeah, early on you have to get used to kind of having a few bruises on your arms and your legs because you do hit a lot of walls when you first start. Um, and ice, as you can imagine, isn't very uh, soft. It's quite unforgiving. So you kind of have some nice ice burns down your arm as you're going through, which come up in some bruises. Um, but there's nothing major. You just bump some bruises and... As we all know, we get that in anything that we do in life, you know, running around the schoolyard, I'm sure. There's been a couple of spills that you've had. Um, so it's all okay. It's worth it in the end. And over to you for your last question, please, Kismet Park. Have, have you seen any famous people in Sochi? Oh, it depends Hello. who you call famous. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I don't know. I did hear that Princess Anne was in one day, but I never got to see her. Um, we've seen lots of gold medalists, so everyone who's already won their gold medals, they're always just hanging around the village. Um, so I get to see a lot of them, but probably we're not the ones like the, um, the Summer Olympics that you would have, um, you know, your Kobe Bryants and or the big superstars from your baseball, your basketball and all of them. We don't have so many of them, but you know, I haven't even seen Sean White going around the village. I'm not sure where he is staying, but um, yeah, there's, there's always the gold medalists. There's always a few special people coming around. Lucy, I'm just going to say thank you so much for participating in today's Chat to a Champ. We really appreciate you getting up early over in Sochi and uh, and sharing with us your Olympic experience. So I'm going to ask each of the schools now just to say goodbye and give you a bit of a cheer. So Chinchilla first. You might need to unmute yourselves as well. Yes. <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Thanks, Angela. And across to you, Kismet Park. You want to give a big cheer to Lucy to the Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kismet Park. All right. Thanks for participating in Chat to a Champ. And tomorrow in Chat to a Champ, we have Lydia Lankala. Yeah, that was a special one. Bye, Bye, Lucy. Bye. Enjoy the rest Bye. of your day. Bye. 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 Bye